This is amazing. Now we are going to see how you can analyze survey data. Imagine you have a database or Excel sheet like this where you have multiple data. One is quantitative data, another one is qualitative data. So all these data in one sheet and you want to query the data. Here I'm asking a question to the chatbot. What is the average number of times people visited the restaurant in the last year? And then click enter. So here is the answer. The average number of times people visited the restaurant in the last year is approximately 4.08 times. So this is directly analyzing from the sheet. You can also ask a qualitative question. What children at the restaurant do other than eating? And asking the question. And now we got the response. Talking, using technology, creative activities, playing, relaxing and socializing. So this is from qualitative data. When the user asks a question, then the AI is going to identify whether it's a qualitative question or quantitative question. Based on that, it's going to different routes accordingly. If it's quantitative, then it's going to use natural language to SQL to analyze the data and give us the final output. If it's qualitative, it's going to retrieve the data from the database and then give the output. Then finally, that is responded back to the user. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about analyzing survey data using Vectorshift. In this, we have a CSV file, which contains both quantitative data and qualitative data. So what is quantitative and what is qualitative? As you can see in this sheet, anything with numbers is quantitative data. Anything with text is qualitative data. So asking questions manually to this data or analyzing manually is tedious. It takes a lot of time. This is survey data. We have some example questions. How many times have you come to the restaurant in the last year? And responded with these answers. Similarly, when asked a question like this, other than eating, what do your children do during the visit to the restaurant? And this is a text response. Now we need to analyze this data. If you're manually analyzing the data, you need to choose the tool, separate qualitative from quantitative data, then use formulas to analyze data. And also for each question, you need to have different formulas to get the answer. But using the power of AI, the AI is going to decide the tool to use, whether to do a SQL query or a knowledge-based query. Next, it can automatically identify whether it's a qualitative question or a quantitative question. Next, it can automatically create SQL query based on that. And finally, it can respond with human readable answers. I'm going to take you through step by step how you can build the same pipeline in Vectorshift, go through every single components which we create, and finally publish it as a chatbot like this. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so this video can be helpful for many others like you. So Vectorshift is a no-code AI automation platform where you can build pipeline, integrate that with various applications, use multiple large language models, and finally create a chatbot. Thanks to Vectorshift for sponsoring this video. You can get started for free. Use Mervin Prisoner's coupon code to get 20% off. So now we are going to log in. As you can see here, first step is that we are going to get a user input. So you can actually create your own pipeline by going to create, create pipeline. There you got custom built template, you can use that. But in my case, I'm going to create from scratch. So create pipeline from scratch. Now we got an empty page. You've got multiple components you can add. Input, output, text, pipeline, different large language models to use, knowledge base, integration, data layers, multimodal, logic. In our case, we are going to use condition and finally chat memory, data collector, etc. So first we are going to create input. So now I have created an input with user question. That is like a text question. So next step, we need to have a large language model to identify if the question is qualitative question or quantitative question. So after the input, I've added a large language model and a condition. So in the large language model, we are giving a system information, determine if the question requires quantitative or qualitative response. If it's quantitative, output quantitative. If it's qualitative, output qualitative. This is a simple task. So we are assigning that to GPT 3.5 Turbo, which works out much more cheaper. So always give simple tasks to smaller models and advanced tasks to larger models to save on costs. Next, that response is sent to the condition. So if the condition is quantitative, then we are passing the input to the next. Or if it's qualitative, we are passing the input to the next area. 
If there is no response in regards to qualitative or quantitative, then it's going to respond saying I am unable to answer. So overall, we have completed building the next step. Now we need to create this large language model. If it's quantitative, then it should automatically retrieve the relevant data from the CSV or any database. So I'm going to add one more. So now I've added extra bits here. So one is CSV query loader and the file. So here I can upload a file. That's the survey data file, restaurant survey data. And this CSV query loader use the natural language to convert that to SQL query. So as soon as we upload the data here as a CSV file, it will get converted and get stored in the Postgres database. So this natural language, which the CSV query loader receives, gets converted to SQL query and it queries the database and then gets the relevant answer. This simplifies the process of us manually writing all those queries. That is the power of AI. Now next, we are going to add another condition that is if it is qualitative, that is text-based questions. So again, we are going to create another large language model, which is able to retrieve relevant information from the knowledge base. That's where we are going to store all the text-based data. So I'm going to add that here. Now I have added that here. So overall, you can see as same as in the picture, the input goes to the first large language model. And then based on the condition, it's going to get divided based on the quantitative or qualitative. So here, same as before, the large language model answer the question based on the context. We are providing the question and the context. The context gets retrieved from the knowledge base. So here you can upload your data. So in Vectorship dashboard, you got a section called storage, and then you can upload your own data. So if you want to create a new knowledge base, you can create knowledge base and upload that data here. So once after you upload the data, you're choosing that knowledge base here, and that is passed as context. So a rag process happening behind the scenes. So now we have completed the step of adding both these large language models, both for qualitative and quantitative. Now, finally, we are going to merge that together and get the output. For that, I've just added the final merge and the output. So all the data, that's the answer from each of these branches, merging that and finally giving the output. That's it. Now we have successfully built the whole pipeline to analyze qualitative, quantitative data, both on the same database or Excel sheet. Now I'm going to test this by clicking the run button. I'm asking the same question. What is the average number of times people visited the restaurant in the last year? And clicking the run. And here is a response approximately 4.08 times. So now we have successfully tested this. Now to deploy it, just go here and click this button to deploy the pipeline. And then click this button, deploy as chatbot. Here I'm going to give a name, survey data chatbot, and click save. Then you're gonna click export, open chatbot. Now our chatbot is ready. Now I'm going to ask a question. What do children at the restaurant do other than eating? And then click enter. And here is the response as simple as that. Now you are able to analyze your own survey data or any type of data and modify this pipeline based on your requirement. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to create more videos similar to this. So stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.